Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Luis Chavez. I'm a photographer and filmmaker based out of Southern California. And in today's video, I wanna talk about the settings that I use for the Ricoh GR3. I know a lot of people have been asking me um, on my settings, both on YouTube and on Instagram. So I wanna to take today and just go over the way I set up this camera and just the, the way I shoot it every single day. So as most of you know, I'm a wedding photographer. So the settings on here is not gonna reflect that. This is just my everyday camera. So the settings that I use here are gonna be a little bit different than that they would be on a job. So uh, yeah, here we go. So to go over my favorite part of the Ricoh GR3 and the menu that I use the most is a sub menu that I use. So if you hit this button right here uh, on the Ricoh GR3, uh, it brings up this sub menu that you can customize. So the way I have this customized for the way that I like to shoot, since I'm not a street photographer, and this is just day-to-day kind of camera, just a snapshot camera. Um, I want that to reflect that for me to be able to just get photos really, really quickly without overthinking about the shot. So um, on the first page here is just the uh, image control. So with this camera, you get some uh, film kind of looks. So um, I usually don't do more than just a few looks. So the one that's almost always on here is positive film. And that's for the times I am shooting in um, uh, JPEG only. So I like to keep this on positive film because it has a really nice uh, look to it without me having to do most in post. So I usually keep it in positive film. And the other one that I usually uh, change to is soft black and white. And uh, soft monotone uh, primarily is just what I use for black and whites while I'm shooting and composing for black and white. Because sometimes when I shoot in uh, a lot of these cameras, I like to kind of compose and look as if I was shooting for that specific film. I don't shoot a lot of film, so whenever I shoot for, uh, I have photos that I want specifically in black and white, I switch it to soft black and white so I can kind of picture it in black and white without having to um, just uh, take it in color in the first place. So those are the only two I touch. I don't usually use anything else. I know they have quite a few of them, like standard, vivid, um, black and white, soft black and white, and hard black and white, and high contrast black and white. And like I said, I usually leave it at soft black and white. It's just the, the most pleasing look to my eye. And if not, I just keep it in positive film. And then they also have a bleach bypass, a retro look, HDR tone, and cross processing and then some custom ones that I just don't customize because like I said, I like to use this camera as um, simplistically as possible, if that makes any sense. So uh, I don't like to fidget with a lot of things. So a lot of this stuff is gonna be standard um, if I'm completely honest. So the next one is focus. And the focus is, um, I usually keep it auto area, auto focus. And one of the best parts about this camera specifically is it has great touch autofocus here because it doesn't have a viewfinder or anything. So you're composing through the actual LCD. And so the autofocus here, uh, the spot autofocus is really, really snappy. So I never have to, I never have to worry about uh, whether or not I'm going to get the exact focus I want because even when the camera catches focus on a specific uh, part that I don't want, I can right away recompose and refocus on the part that I do. So I usually keep it there, but they have quite a few other options that you can use just to select autofocus and like I said it usually when I touch it it kind of goes to that anyway. Um, pinpoint autofocus here, um, tracking autofocus, autofocus which I don't use very much to be honest. If you see here it does track pretty well but I don't find it reliable enough for me to sh um, rely on it so much uh, so I typically don't use that very often. Continuous autofocus is another one that I don't usually use because I don't really shoot a lot of fast moving subjects with this camera so I don't use it. Um, I do enable it on like my a7 III and stuff like that but for this type of camera I, I just don't. Uh, manual focus and again to be completely honest with you guys I usually do stick with manual focusing kind of like on the Leica Q2 or sometimes in the a7 III but for this one I just I just want the camera to be snappy and the autofocus here is reliable enough to where I don't have to fidget with manual focus. But I do know that there's some people out there on YouTube who have great videos on manual focusing on this camera, but I just don't do it. So I don't find that I will be very helpful in that sense. So um, yeah, I will try to link videos that I find who um, talk about manual focus as well as snap focus. Cause again, I don't use that very often cause I'm not a street shooter. Uh, although I do enjoy watching street photography uh, videos, I am not a primarily street shooting photographer. 
but I do know that it has uh, this feature here and I know a lot of people like to use that as well. So if we go along with this one, it's this is another one of my favorite features of this camera. So this is the um, metering for your um, exposure. So you get a, quite a few options here. The one I use the most, I would say, is center weight weighted um, metering uh, because it just kind of gives me a nice exposure for the overall image. And the second one that I use the most is highlight weighted um, metering, which I have never seen in any other camera. Uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, in any other camera, uh, at least the ones that I've shot with. And uh, this one uh, meters for the highlights. So if you really wanna protect those highlights uh, and if you're specifically shooting in RAW, that's really, really helpful if you wanna make sure that you're not clipping those highlights, but you still wanna get some of that um, uh, detail um, back in the, from the shadows. So if you wanna bring that in post, you still get that. So that's something that I've used a lot, if, especially if I'm shooting like in the middle of the day, and I don't wanna have to worry about whether or not I'm clipping the highlights. This makes sure that I don't. And so this is something that I've used quite a bit. Um, for the next uh, menu, or for the next uh, section on this menu is file format. And I usually always keep it in RAW, but there's times where I wanna switch it to get both JPEG and RAW. So this is the only time I would switch it, but it's nice that I can have that option on here. So usually it's in RAW, sometimes in RAW plus JPEG. I hardly ever just shoot in JPEG, but it's great to have that option if I ever want to. And the last one that I have here is the brightness of this um, screen. So oftentimes um, I use this camera all day long. So I like to make sure that I can uh, adjust the brightness on the, on the screen as much as possible. So if ever I'm outdoors, I crank up the, the screen because I, you just can't see it very well. And um, whenever I go back indoors, I put it back into the center. Or if I'm shooting at nighttime, I usually bring it down just so I'm conserving a little bit of battery, if, even especially if I don't need that brightness on the camera to be uh, that bright. So those are all the settings I have on this sub menu. And like I said, that's been the best uh, feature for this camera that I've had. Because even though um, I don't like to usually control all the manual um, controls on this camera as much as I do with my other cameras, uh, it's nice that I still have some options here even though there's no physical dials. And to kind of hurry up along here, there's another button that I customized here. Um, if you can see here on this camera, it has a video mode button, which I disabled because I just don't use it. I don't use video for this camera, but I did change it to, um, if I don't want to fiddle with this submenu system, I did switch it to, again, to switch the LCD uh, brightness. When I press on it and then when you press and hold, you get that Wi-Fi, um, uh, um, so you can transfer your photos to your phone. And I don't use the Rico standard app. I use a different one that I found online. Uh, let me see here real quickly um, if I can find it. If I can't find it, I'll put it on the screen uh, because it's been really helpful um, for me to uh, have it the RAWs very, very quickly onto my phone if I'm not near a computer. So I can edit them on the go if I want to and I have all my uh, Lightroom profiles on my phone through Lightroom anyway, so I can edit as I would. Not as much control as I would on a desktop, but a little bit of control that I would want um, if I'm editing RAWs on the go. So to continue here on the main menu, uh, just to go over this very, very quickly, um, I had it on snap focus, but I don't really use it. I was just kind of playing around with it. So um, auto area autofocus is what I usually have it on. And again, if I want to uh, choose my autofocus point, I just touch the LCD, which is great and I, usually it's very, very, very reliable. I have uh, face detection on just because I use this camera for family and stuff. So if I ever want to just get a quick photo of my family, it's already on. Uh, on there, it's not focused again. I'm, I don't use it, so it's just on, but because um, I'm kind of testing it out, but I don't really use it as of lately. Um, another thing, let me see here, uh, that might be interesting to you. ND filter, I have ND filter um, auto because um, like I said, I just want to make sure that the camera is doing a lot of this computation on its own and I just have it on in case I ever need it. Um, white balance, I usually keep it on um, multi-auto white balance. I find it that it's pretty reliable, especially if I'm shooting in RAW. I don't have to worry too much about that. But um, the 
way to change the auto the auto the white balance I should say onto this camera is pretty easy. You get a, a button here to change the white balance right on the camera. Press on it, and then you know this wheel rotates, and you can um, have all these presets already for your white balance, or you can choose the color temperature right at the end here of this menu. And again, if you want to choose um, your ISO as well, it's right here on the dial. You press once and then you unlock it and you can switch your ISO if you want to change that very, very quickly. Um, another button that's really, really useful and the one that I never disable or change is the macro mode. I don't use it all that often, but it's great that there's a, a button here that just changes it really, really quickly. So it's really useful and, and I use it quite a bit um, if I'm like, taking photos for flowers and stuff, but I, I, I'm glad that, that there's a button here for that. Uh, on here, this is also the drive mode. I usually just keep it in single frame shooting. Um, I don't use a lot of uh, continuous shooting on this camera or uh, any of these settings, honestly, because uh, uh, I just don't find a need for it. Uh, so this usually is all standard. Um, so yeah, I mean, hopefully this is helpful for people. I don't like to fiddle around with this camera too much. Cause I just, like I said, I use it just uh, on auto mode as much as possible. Uh, I have my uh, user settings here saved on this. Um, and if I can, you can see it here on, on this dial here, but it's just aperture priority mode. Basically just um, all the settings kind of baked into here um, that I usually use, but um, I usually don't change it. There's very few times where I do change it to manual controls, but that's very rare for, for me. But yeah, it's it's a, a great little camera. Hopefully this is helpful to anybody. I'm not, um, I know there's other videos that really go really in, de in depth of all these settings, but uh, it's just not something that I do. I just did this video because a lot of people were asking me about it. And I hope that it's helpful for people who are not uh, specifically shooting for street and just shooting, they just want to get this camera for like, their daily life or for families and stuff. So um, yeah, uh, I, like I said, I highly recommend this camera to people, uh, especially if you're either getting into photography or you want to get back to basics. This is a, a great little camera. And if you have any questions about anything in particular that I didn't go over, please let me know. Um, like I said, it's not an in-depth uh, review of all the settings, but I hope that it's helpful. So yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.